come to see the bias inherent in the system. Because I'm sure you've seen the title of this video, and now you're seeing on your screen the official Fox 59 story. Now, why is the title that I'm using very different from what they're using? This is the bias inherent in the system. I hope you like the Monty Python reference. The story says, Indy mother becomes second homicide along downtown canal in one week. Why isn't this story being politicized? Why isn't it national news? Because in this story, they mentioned that an argument erupted about Black Lives Matter and language, and that's it. What they don't tell you is that according to the father, what happened was this young woman was walking past another group who said Black Lives Matter. She responded with all lives matter. And for that, she was shot three times, once in the head. Now, it's a very difficult story to cover because the media doesn't tell us what's really going on. They use vague innuendo and don't tell us what really happened. And they know. Fortunately, Cassandra Fairbanks, a personal friend of mine and journalist, contacted the family to dig into the story and see what was going on. And it was confirmed to her from the father. That's what happened. Here's the story. Indy mother, second homicide along downtown canal in one week. They say an Indianapolis mother was shot and killed along the canal early Sunday, marking the second homicide on the canal in a week. According to the victim's family, the shooting started with an argument over Black Lives Matter and language. Eventually, the two sides separated and walked away from each other until witnesses claim the killer opened fire from nearby bridge and ran away. Let me just break this down for you, what the media, what this news outlet is doing. Black Lives Matter and language. The killer opened fire. The killer started it because she said all lives matter. And that's what we get. Here's the tweet from Cassandra Fairbanks. She says her father, Robert Doty, told the Gateway Pundit that the BLM supporters had walked by her and her fiance and said Black Lives Matter, to which Jessica responded that all lives matter. The Black Lives Matter activists had allegedly pulled out weapons during the argument, which prompted Ramirez to do the same. This led to them backing off, but not for long. An argument started and guns came out, but they worked things out. Unfortunately, they didn't drop it and waited for them to walk back through. And she was shot in the head, Doty told the Gateway Pundit. When, when asked how the family is holding up, Doty said one day at a time is all we can do. Her grandfather posted on Facebook that multiple black assailants shot her in the head. Why isn't anybody outraged about this? He asked in a post. Is it that BLM was involved or is it uh, or, or that it was young white adults that were the victims? I asked her dad what we can do beyond pushing the GoFundMe. He said, just keep pushing for justice. She deserves it. Her son deserves it. Now, I know and trust Cassandra. However, the Gateway Pundit is not a certified news outlet, according to NewsGuard standards. And to be completely honest, I think the Gateway Pundit has done some questionable things in the past. I don't use them as a source. However, what we can see here is that at least in this instance, the only real story, the only real news you're going to get is going to come from Cassandra Fairbanks and the Gateway Pundit. I think it's fair to say we can very easily see what this is. An argument over Black Lives Matter and language. But what does that even mean? Come on. We know what it means. And it was confirmed now to Cassandra this woman said all lives matter and for it, she was killed. And this brings us to the biggest problem we face as a country. Why isn't the media talking about this? Why won't the media say end the political violence? Why is it that for over a month in Portland, there has been riots, an attempted breach on a federal building? Where is the news to say this is bad? Why can't a local news outlet come out and just say it? I don't know. I really, really don't know. I got to be honest. I don't see any reason why this outlet shouldn't just say straight up, this is what happened. This is the bias we get from the media. They say she shouldn't have lost her life. She's got a three-year-old son she loved dearly, said Ramirez. That was her fiance. Explaining to Jessica's son, Grayson, Grayson, that he'll never see his mom again has been the hardest part for the family. It's hard to tell, tell him his mom is in heaven. And if you want to talk to her, you have to look up and say, I love you, mom. Just one week earlier, two people were shot on the same part of the canal. During one of those shootings, a 14 year old uh, was, was shot in an attempted robbery. You see, you see what they do here? Look at this. They say uh, described as an attempted armed robbery. Our message is that the canal is still a safe. Wait, 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 what? An armed robbery? 
What does that have to do with someone saying black lives matter and someone else saying all lives matter? I don't know, man. This story, this, this story to me is, is ridiculous and I'm sad. And so uh, my heart goes out to the family. I wish we weren't in this uh, current state of political chaos and crisis. But I, I wanted to lead with this story, but I also wanted to, uh, I'm going to show you some more. Look, man, crime is, crime is going up. And whatever this political system, whatever, whatever is going on is kind of crazy. The news won't tell you, okay? They're not going to tell you. Your perspective will be skewed. You will not realize what's going on in the streets. They will demonize the police. Crime will skyrocket across this country, and we're going to see the results of it. I don't know why the media wouldn't tell us the truth here and language. But I'll tell you this, activists will use this gap in perspective to bolster their cause and sow more chaos. I want to bring you now to New York City, where the chaos is, re- chaos is, is, is reaching uh, a crescendo, I guess. Maybe not. Maybe it's going to keep skyrocketing. So I'll, I'll wrap up this, this, this portion of it by just saying, you know, I wanted to highlight this because it shows you, I think it shows you why we're having this difficulty, why it's so hard to have a rational conversation, why it's so hard to say we need police, we, we, we can't be slashing the budgets in this way, we can be, maybe, we, maybe we can do reform, maybe we can do you know, demilitarizing things like that, maybe we can create a civil guard of some sort, but we're not going to be, to be able to actually deal with these problems, and, and, and very much so. They will continue to be, it'll, it'll get worse and worse so long as this is the, the, the news that we get when they don't actually give us. They're scared. That's it, right? The news media must be scared to admit it. Well, I bring you now to New York City. Known gang member puts an NYPD officer in a headlock in the Bronx while he tries to make an arrest and is cheered on by the watching crowd before fleeing. A police officer was filmed being caught in a headlock in the Bronx in New York. Cops suddenly lost control and the suspect held the officer's head for four seconds. Eventually, the officer fell to the ground and the suspect ran away. Throughout the incident, there was taunting as officers attempted crowd control. The person responsible turned themselves in last week, days after the event. The suspect was released without charge pending further investigation. New York City is about to ban police officers from using chokeholds. Officers who use the practice could find themselves with a one-year jail term. When you have a broken media that won't give you a... Listen, it's not just about that one outlet. It's about the fact that every single outlet in this country should be saying, this is getting crazy. But they don't. But they ignore it. And what happens next? Now in New York City, you are seeing the chaos. Now look, this is just one story. A known gang member grabbed a cop, put him in a put him in a headlock. Apparently, the cops can't do that. The cops are demoralized. The anti crime unit in, in uh, NYC was reassigned, and what's happened? Crime has skyrocketed. Shootings are skyrocketing. Surprise, surprise. My point with all of this so far is that without an honest media to tell us what's really going on, we cannot make the decisions to solve the problems. I know I bring this bit up a lot. California's Prop 209, uh, they're they're appealing it. But this is an important example as I move forward and show you what's going on in New York. And and I'll end with a bit of, I guess, catharsis. New York is collapsing, by the way. In California, the Assembly, the State Assembly and Senate have voted to repeal their anti-discrimination law, basically saying that, you know, by repealing this language, the state will have the right to discriminate based on race. But they call it the affirmative action amendment. This is what happens when your media lies to you. Come November, people are going to see on the ballot, do you support support or oppose the affirmative action amendment? And people are going to go, oh, beep. And they're going to click affirmative action. Yes. Not realizing it's a name. And the actual text of the bill would strip them of their civil rights. That's what happens when you don't have a media telling people what's really going on. Perhaps if the national level media was saying a woman was murdered for saying all lives matter, shot in the head, you would have more people standing up and saying we need our law enforcement. Don't get me wrong. Look, I understand they, they do. The media does cover a lot of these stories. But which, 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 you know, what, what really bothers me, I see these journalists do this all the time. 
There was one post where they said, isn't it funny how people always say, why is the media talking about this? And then it turns out they did and no one cared. And I'm like, do you see this story that I just, the first story I showed you? Black Lives Matter and language. Maybe if they told you what it was really about, it was about politics, you'd have a better understanding. Here's what uh, um, Michael Brendan Doherty said about it. The upshot of this story is that a three-year-old learned a powerful lesson about what not to say. You see? They know. They know what really happened. He's linking to a story that doesn't actually mention the phrase all lives, ma- all lives matter. But these people know. They won't tell the average person, but they'll tell each other. They'll tell themselves. We have another really crazy story. This, this video is going viral. Uh, two elderly men were stabbed in shocking, unprovoked NYC subway attack amid surge and violent crime in the Big Apple. As New York Sheriff says, we're starting to lose control. They're losing control because the media is not honest. It's not entirely the media, mind you, but the activists have the edge. The extremists have the edge. They can come out, they can say whatever they want, and they will get favorable coverage. Do this. Google search Antifa. And you know what, you know what pops up right now? There are a bunch of stories saying the truth about Antifa. They're not really all that bad. They're actually peaceful. Yep. And then when they engage in violence and, and, and terrorize people and loot buildings, and, and they've been besieging a federal courthouse in Portland for like 40 something plus days, those are the stories you don't get. They then, they, they, when, when you bring that up, they say Antifa isn't real. It's not real. There's one I love the other day. I, I mentioned this. They actually had a guy who claimed to be a, a executive director for a self-avowed Antifa organization with members with funding. And then they go on to say, but Antifa isn't real. This is what we can expect to happen, man. The, 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 the crime in New York City is, is, is their own doing, and so be it. But what's really scary about what we're seeing is that one thing I've mentioned a lot is morality policing. That we're seeing in New York, for instance, they paint Black Lives Matter. Mayor Bill de Blasio says straight up, no public gatherings allowed, but Black Lives Matter is allowed. It's not just about policing. Our society is starting to adopt an overt I'll call it, a, a, I call it a religion, but they've been adopting it. And I sit back and I find it shocking because what this means as the Black Lives Matter mantra truly now represents intersectionalism, a non-theistic religion, you are seeing that this religion will become the law of the land, even with the constitution. They have found a clever workaround. The workaround is that legally intersectionalism is not recognized as a religion, though it should be. This allows them to break the barrier between church and state. You have people who believe things that are not founded in science. They're founded in faith. They inject it into science and now they can claim it's real. White fragility, all of these weirds, the whole, look, social science is being infected. I'm sure many of you are aware of the Sokol Squared hoax where uh, to, uh, it, was, it was James Lindsay, Peter Bogosian, and Helen Pluckrose enacted this, this long, go, long going uh, scam maybe not scam, but hoax, where they got fake scientific papers published in many journals. Our, our scientific community, our academic community has been infected with, has been inundated with a non-theistic religion. Our media is now doing the same. Our major corporations, even our police, local governments. We're hearing that there are more charges being dropped for Black Lives Matter rioters across the board in several different jurisdictions. We're seeing that you can paint Black Lives Matter in the street, but you can't paint All Lives Matter. I got no problem if you want to express your free speech. I understand some of these things are permitted. But seeing this story out of, uh, out of it, I believe it's Indianapolis, this is, this is part of the problem, that we, we, we have a spineless media that is not willing to stand up and talk about what's going on. In response, you are going to see your homes. These fights, these battles will not be happening in some far off place. I mean, many of you don't live in New York City, for sure. NYC summer crime surge has many causes, but bail reform coronavirus jail release is unlikely to blame. This is what we get. The media will ignore what's really happening. Now, I think regular people know. I think regular people know what's going on. That if someone murders you for saying all lives matter, the media won't cover it. The national level, level media will not cover it. No one will know. And the family can beg all they want for justice and the media will not cover it. Now, what do you think would have happened if it was inverted? If the all lives matter person shot the black lives matter person, it would be the front page of the New York Times. 
escalating white supremacy violence. The at NPR ran a story where they showed a picture of a victim in her car being attacked by rioters. And then they made the headline seem like this was a white supremacist attack. This is what's going on with our media. And I'm worried. Will regular people in this country, will they see through this? And do they know? I think the scary answer is for the most part, no, they won't. They're, they're not going to see the, the, the high level stories about the, the, the woman being killed. They're not going to see the, you know, this, this woman in her car being attacked. Some people will. Maybe they'll be personally affected and maybe they'll tell people. I imagine the family of this young woman who said all lives matter will go around telling people. But I got to be honest, the fact that this young woman would say all lives matter. And, you know, I've, I've done some in, uh, digging into the story. It, it really does seem legit. And I've seen what their family posts on Facebook. They're already Trump supporters. Are they going to convince anybody? Maybe, maybe not. What you need to happen is that, first of all, every person who, you know, who's on the right would have to vote for Trump. But Trump and, and, and the Republicans, conservatives, have to convince moderates to support them. And that's the big challenge when you are being banned from social media when the, and when major newspapers are lying. I want to show you something I find interesting. And I don't know, uh, I don't, I, I, this is just Zillow. You are, for those that are familiar with what Zillow is, it's a real estate website for finding properties for sale and uh, rentals. I went to New York City and I decided to look at properties for sale, any property for sale in the last 30 days. And what I found was 7,684 results. I don't know if that's a big number. Some people are saying it is. Some people are saying in the past month, the amount of uh, uh, real estate that's gone up for sale is skyrocketing. So let me do something in real time for you. Right now, you are seeing an active Zillow page with 7,684 results in the past 30 days. Let me, let me go back 90 days. In 90 days, there are 12,175. That means there's around 4,500 or so posts that happened three months ago. So, so, so let, me, let me break this down. What happened in the past month? How about widespread riots? Mayor Bill de Blasio siding with the extremists, allowing them to do their thing. And what happens? Three months ago, we have about two, you know, 2,750 people put up their property for sale. Maybe that's a lot. Maybe a month after that, we see another 2,750. But then something happened in the past month where 7,600 properties went up for sale. In one month, that's, that's almost triple the amount for the months prior. Now, my math is, is not perfect because I don't know exactly how much went, you know, went up for sale in those two months. But listen, if three months, you know, two, uh, uh, three months ago you have, or, or two months ago, you had these two months where there was an average, you know, 4,000. And then in one month, another 7,000 stands to reason that people are fleeing the cities. And we know it's true. We've seen the data. Half a million uh, or so middle and upper class people are fleeing New York City. I don't know what this is going to mean for the rest of the country. I don't, it mean, I don't know what it means for the election. I don't know if it's too late. Some, some people will be able to register. Some people probably won't be able to register. I think a lot of people will be able to register to vote in other areas. Maybe, you know, a lot of these uh, urban liberals will go and vote for Joe Biden in some other place, but I really doubt it. A lot of people have brought up that if people flee New York City, which is heavy blue, and they go to red areas, they will flip the suburbs to support Joe Biden. I don't agree with that. You know why? If somebody has the understanding to flee a city over what's going on, do you think they're, they're going to vote for Joe Biden? Why do people flee New York City? Um, the numbers are going up right now, probably due to the rioting and the morality policing the weakness of government. Do you think these people, I mean, many of them, maybe, but I think most of them are fleeing and saying, gotta vote for Trump. You know, man, we live in uh, interesting times, to say the least. And I've had a lot of conversations with people lately about where's the right place to go? What's the right, right thing to do? And I honestly, I'm going to do what's right by me. I'm getting out of the cities. I'm leaving New Jersey. New Jersey is, is probably the worst when it comes to COVID. Everything here has just been, been mismanaged and completely awful. So now 
I mean, you can see it. But I wonder if we're going to get any journalists doing a deep dive into, say, what these what these people leaving do some interviews. No, journalists don't care to cover the things that make the movement look bad because the journalists, as far as I'm concerned, are either completely terrified to admit what happened. I would ask Fox 59 in, 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 uh, in Indiana, why didn't you just say an argument broke out versus Black Lives Matter or All Lives Matter? Why is it that we're not seeing, you know, front page stories about the ongoing assault in Portland? Some dude got shot in there with a tear gas canister. Was, there's a viral video of him just gagging up blood. Of course, they called 911, tried, you, you know, you know use, use federal, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, use uh, emergency services that they're protesting to actually help them. But we don't hear about it. The only way you'll hear about it probably is if you watch channels like mine and others like this. And unfortunately, I got to tell you, man, while things have been really good for my channel on the uh, on the on the growth front, there's there's no there's no comparison, man. I mean, look, Tucker Carlson getting uh, highest cable TV ratings in history, 4.3 million on average and a ma- massive amount like 700, 780,000 in the key demo. I'll tell you this. The crazy thing is I'm fairly confident I get way more views in the key demo than Tucker Carlson does. Granted, he's I mean, he's, he's a huge show, so he's got a lot more reach among the older, older crowd. Even with, uh, I think in the past month, I've had about 77 million views across my channels, a little bit more actually, because there's some other channels that, um, like, like Scanner, for instance, but that's not really political. 77 million views. That's good. But when you look at CNN, 300 plus million, when you look at CBS, ABC, NBC, it's, it's just no question, man. We may be the actual resistance. You know, the people who are paying attention, who are seeing what's happening and talking about it, but it might not be enough. Maybe no matter what happens come November, it doesn't matter if you know or don't know. So let me end by saying this. I'm, I'm sad for the family. Um, I'm mad that the, this is not a bigger story. Uh, I think it should have been a front page story like this is huge. Will they not talk about the Trump supporters who get attacked? They don't. And so most of my friends think that right wing violence is more frequent when, in fact, there are high profile instances, instances of extreme, you know, ec- uh, extremist violence. I don't necessarily want to say right wing, but like fringe, far right, whatever you want to call it. The far left engages in violence on a regular basis. If you want to go by the numbers, we have 42 plus days of violence in Portland. The media doesn't cover it. And so people don't know. And they can't vote for something if they don't know what it is. And they'll vote for the wrong thing based on being misled. I think the most important thing you can do is speak your mind and tell people what's happening and share these stories with them. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel, and I will see you all then.